Since the beginning of time, humans have gazed up at the stars and wondered, could there be life out there? For millions of people today, the answer is yes. We can't. We can't be the only ones. I think we would be very foolish to think that we're alone in the universe. In fact, alien spacecrafts have been seen by people all around the globe. Brazil, Russia, Bolivia, South America. And sightings are becoming more and more frequent. This is happening worldwide at a faster pace. Something is, is visiting us, trying to wake us up. So are we on the verge of a mass contact with extraterrestrials? There was a time coming very quickly upon us where once and for all, everyone will know without a doubt that we are not alone. From the notorious old favorites, such as Roswell and Area 51, to new UFO hotspots such as Phoenix, Arizona and Guadalupe, Mexico, we'll traverse the land exploring history and conspiracies, witnessing first-hand accounts, and learning from leading experts about the past, present, and future of aliens and UFOs. Join us on our search mission to uncover the truth, next on Weird Travels. Are we alone in the universe? There is no greater mystery. For years, extraterrestrials have taken hold of our imaginations and permeated our culture through countless books, television shows, and films. We don't live in a demon-haunted world of the Middle Ages or ghosts and poltergeists of the 19th century. We live in a world of NASA and the space shuttle and space exploration and Star Trek and Star Wars and Close Encounters. For many people, aliens are more than just the stars of Hollywood blockbusters. I do believe in aliens are here. I think they've been here for quite some time. I've never seen him personally, but um, I don't think uh, we're it. In fact, according to a recent CNN poll, one in seven Americans has seen or knows someone who has seen a sign of alien activity. I've had many sightings myself. I've had many experiences. I've seen aliens. Uh, UFOs that when I was in Vietnam, they were flying so fast, so far above what we had. As eyewitness reports pile up, 80% of Americans continue to believe that the government isn't revealing everything it knows about UFO activity. I believe that there's some kind of a uh, mandate to cover up information that would reveal the truth about extraterrestrials. So is anyone out there? The best place to look for answers is at the site of the most infamous alien controversy of all, Roswell, New Mexico. Roswell is an extraordinarily important event because obviously it, it answers all the questions. Are we being visited? Yeah, an alien spacecraft crashed. The Roswell incident is a fascinating story, not of aliens, but of myth-making. These are the known facts. In the first week of July 1947, several Roswell residents saw a strange object blazing through the night sky. The next morning, a local rancher found debris from a crash out in a sheep field. With the Air Force's 509th Bomb Group stationed just a few miles away, the site was soon closed for inspection. The head intelligence officer subsequently issued a press release to the local paper. A headline in the local Roswell newspaper pronounced that the Air Force had recovered a crashed flying saucer near Roswell. The headline went around the world. Hours later, a second press release rescinded the first one, saying a mistake had been made. The recovered wreckage was from a weather balloon, not a flying saucer. To suggest that the base intelligence officer of our most elite military unit at the time, the 509th Bomb Group, could not identify rubber and tinfoil, instead thinking that that was a spaceship, that's an insult to us and to them. Was it a spaceship or a balloon that crashed on that fateful night in 1947? A trip to downtown Roswell reveals a lot about what version of the story appeals most to visitors and locals alike. 
UFO paraphernalia fills shop windows and street corners all over town. 200,000 people a year come to Roswell. And you specifically come to Roswell because Roswell is three hours from anywhere. According to Randy Reeves, owner and manager of the Alien Zone Twisted Pencil, if an item doesn't have a little green man on it, people won't buy it. But I would say the most popular is the life-size alien if they could find them. And, and uh, you know, it really surprised me how many folks are into the life-size products. The mother load of all alien lore is just down the street at the International UFO Museum. Here you'll find all the details of the Roswell incident, as well as lots of other information about alien encounters. There's even an extensive research library with thousands of books, photographs and videos, not to mention several life-size extraterrestrials. The most interesting thing I thought at the museum was a three-fingered alien. I think they are so cute. But the nearby Crash Site Cafe has something even the museum can't claim. Of course I believe in aliens. I have an alien that works here. Would you like to meet him? This is uh, Mikey. He's uh, our morning cook. And uh, he's always doing his job, you know. And you can get your alien to go. They love especially he's right here. And if you talk to him, they would say hi. But the Roswell incident hasn't just become about cute toys and novelty bumper stickers. Nearly 50 years after the mysterious crash, UFO experts continue to devote serious attention to this bizarre event, and many of them are still trying to prove that it was, in fact, an alien spaceship, and not a weather balloon that crashed in the field. I've been doing the research for the last 20, 25 years, and full-time for the last 10 years. Roswell investigator Dennis Balthaser has interviewed hundreds involved and believes the government's actions suggest a deliberate cover-up. If this was a weather balloon, why were civilians threatened? Why were they told you cannot talk about this and threatened if they did talk about it, they'd be in trouble? Nuclear physicist and premier researcher of the Roswell incident, Stanton Friedman, finds this evidence compelling. When you have people like... Um Thomas Jefferson DuBose, the chief of staff to the head of the 8th Air Force, a colonel and a general when I talked to him, retired. When you have him tell you flat out that he took the call from his boss's boss telling him to cover it up and send some of the wreckage up there. He was in Fort Worth, Texas. The boss was in Washington. And don't ever talk about it again. And I got that straight from him. That's not a third-hand story. You have to respect that. Colonel Jesse Marcel, the base intelligence officer, described to Friedman the strange debris found at the crash site. There were no wires. There were no vacuum tubes. No little tag saying, made in Oshkosh. You know, airplanes are made out of standard parts. There were some I-beam-like pieces, the shape of an eye, like, except only this big. But they had the weight of balsa wood, and then they had strange pastel purple symbols along the inside of the I-beam. None of this was conventional. The debris was brought back to the hangar here and guarded for a few days prior to being shipped out to Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. But it wasn't just debris that was shipped out of town. Reports from retired military personnel may prove something much more disturbing.